Rusty Crow is back with another possession horror. This time, he's going full-blown meta, playing an actor who cracks the shits and starts throwing his weight around under the influence. In a movie about a remake that struggles with the same curse as the original, get ready for a demonic character study in... The Exorcism. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Riles. That's right, The Exorcism, directed by Joshua John Miller. Known for being an actor as a child in roles in After Dark, Teen Witch, and Death Warrant, just to name a few. And this movie being his second feature film. In a meta twist, Joshua is the son of Jason Miller, who played Father Karras in the original Exorcist in 1973. We meet down-and-out actor Anthony Miller, played by the legendary Russell Crowe. He's struggling with his own demons by being a washed-up Hollywood star, battling a past of alcoholism and drug addiction, and learning to live with the death of his mistreated wife. And we learn all this in the first uh, 10 minutes of the film with a Catholic confession exposition dumping. We also meet Anthony's daughter, who has more attitude than WWE in 1998. She's kicked out of school for property damage, having an activist haircut, and openly being a lesbian. However, Anthony has thrown a bone and has one shot at redeeming his career, as he is cast as the priest in The Exorcist Remake. Turns out the originally cast actor as the priest died under mysterious circumstances, and this film playing into the heavily talked about folklore of cursed horror films. Films like The Omen, Poltergeist, and of course, The Original Exorcist. With helping him along on the straight and narrow, he hires his daughter as his personal assistant, who develops a crush on the modern recasting of Reagan. This film is under the direction of the biggest cliché douchebag that ever directed. And the film hires a priest consultant played by Niles himself, David Hyde Pierce. As the film is underway with shooting, creepy shit starts to happen. Lights falling down from rigs from no reason, high tension on set, the director whispering heinous shit into the ear of Anthony, which leads him to act incredibly creepy due to sleep deprivation and battling with his demons, which starts everyone to suspect that maybe Anthony has fallen off the wagon. However, it may seem that it's not just his personal demons at fault here. The film does play it loose with, is he possessed? Or is he struggling under the weight uh, of this career redemption? We also get hints with like little rapid flashbacks that Anthony may have been exposed to demons in the past. But unfortunately, the film only hints at this and doesn't really elaborate on it. We also learn that in his past as a young boy, it may not have been just demons invading his body. Ultimately, the film is more of a character study of a broken man than a straight-up gory horror, and more about a struggle of a man with his personal demons. However, it is a modern thriller slash horror, so you're still going to get that creepy, unsettling nonsense. However, in saying that, I think I only counted about two, maybe three jump scares. And I have to admit, the film does get pretty repetitive towards the end. And of course, we get the expected contorting, conjuring yoga with a little bit of body horror thrown in. However, the best scene without a doubt in this film, and the most creepy and unsettling, is a little brief scene involving a stairwell. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit too brief. And of course, unfortunately, we don't get really any closure on the demons from Anthony's past. It could very well be a suppression of a traumatic memory for Anthony as a child, and using demonic foolery to deal with something possibly way more icky involving a priest. However, I will admit that I was totally on board for the majority of this film until about the third act climax. Of course, it goes full Blumhouse possession exorcism fuckery in the third act. Obviously, the film's just throwing that in there to please the broccoli-haired Gen Zers of the audience. I have to admit, I'm really enjoying this little mini resurgence of Russell Crowe's career. You know, he's involved in these little thriller horror films. He elevates every film that he's in and effortlessly delivers every piece of dialogue with gravitas and nuance. The daughter character, played by Ryan Simpkins, was pretty good too. She held her own opposite a good old Rusty. And Aussie Sam Worthington pops up for a cameo, taking time out from filming 11 Avatar sequels. But the best on ground for me, the most captivating performance from an actor, besides Rusty Boy of course, was none other than David Hyde Pierce. 
the man has a really great comedic soothing presence and can make any piece of dialogue believable. Not sure if this is Joshua John Miller's homage or autobiographical tale or simply inspiration from his father's experience on The Exorcist in 1973. And in all honesty, I would have been more interested in Joshua uh, filming a sequel or a spin-off to The Exorcist more so than David Gordon Green. This is not a bad movie, not by any stretch of the imagination. It's not great though. I do appreciate the uh, subtle homage or return to 70s subtle horror. Until the third act climax, of course, where it couldn't fucking help itself. As I've mentioned in previous reviews before, it seems that 70s subtle creepy horror is making somewhat of a comeback. And I'm all for it. I do love me some 80s horror cheese and fun. But I've got to say, 70s horror is superior in the creepy and the scares for me. But anyway guys, that's my cheeky little review of The Exorcism. Pretty good up until the third act. But right down below if you've seen it, what are your thoughts on it? But more importantly, what is your favourite Possession Exorcism film? And of course, if you've made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up, because your love and support keeps me going, because I just love movies, and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon, because I give it an episode weekly. And I'll see you back here next week for the next review, but until then, stay spooky, kids.